Hello, Carrie here. I've got these two books. Hello. <laughs> I'm starting to, I'm starting a new journal. I've got these two to decide between. There's this one that's an old uh, book that I've taken the innards out and put new signatures in with lots of junk papers in, which I totally love. I love having different sizes and different textures to work with. They really are fun. Um, but I'm thinking of saving this because it's got that lovely yellow colour. I'm thinking of saving this to be my B journal. Look at those lovely papers. That's even a piece of my painting. A lovely thick paper, some vellum, some book pages. Love that tree. That's very autumnal. So I'm going to put that aside and that'll be my B one. I've got some ideas for that. And this is a sketchbook, but it's a good quality sketchbook. Um, I can't quite remember where I got it from, but there is a video where I made these two. Um, it's in my How to Start Art Journaling series, which I will link below. And in there, I tell you where this comes from. So I'm going to go with that. And to be very different this time, I'm going to start with jelly plate printing directly into the journal page. I'm trying to stop myself from doing exactly the same thing every time I approach an art journal page. So I'm going to try something different. I want to go for a nice grungy effect. So this is my small jelly plate. I can't quite remember the size. I think it's something like five by seven or four by six, possibly. Uh, so I've taken off the plastic protector. It's already got a bit of paint on it, but that's great because I want build up of paint. I just love that effect. And these are my homemade stencils. Well, they're not all my homemade stencils. These are some commercial ones and some homemade ones. So I'm going to build up some textures with those. So I'm going to be working in these two pages mainly, but I will be working on the other page as well behind. But this is going to be the main one. I'm going to finish this one off into an art journal page. Now the colour I'm using here is, oh, I need some protective paper. Don't want to ruin my lovely marble effect table. So this is Wedgwood Blue, System 3 Acrylic, lovely colour, very gorgeous. It's like a blue-grey, it's really pretty, and it is very Wedgwoody. I live in the area of the potteries, so I appreciate a bit of Wedgwood. Right, so I'm going to try my homemade stencil first of all. Now, I make a mistake with this one because I just push through the whole book. Well, that doesn't come out very well, does it? I'm just going to bob that down, but it doesn't matter because at the moment I'm just beginning to build up some textures, so I'm happy with whatever I get at this stage. And I'm using some Thalo blue. Got a bit of paper on there, that's it. And this is a lovely translucent colour as well, I do like that. But it's getting a bit more opaque with the Wedgwood blue. And now I'm going to use this commercial stencil. I've had it a long time and I don't know where it comes from. And this time, I'm just pressing down one page. You can't see me, but one page. I'm pressing down firmly, and I get a much better print from that. And what's left, I'm going to pop onto the page there. And all oh, that's lovely. I love that. Jelly plate printing is such fun, isn't it? And I'm using some Naples yellow, but of course, I've got way too much again. I'm using um, this paper on the left here as my scrap paper, but eventually I'll be able to use it in collage. This is that paper you get in Amazon parcels. I've actually got a video where I turned this sort of paper into a full journal. I'll link that below as well. There, I'm pressing through that. This is a little diamond stencil, also a commercial one. That's good. Look at that though, that's going to be nice. Lovely, lovely. Right, so what next? I'm going to use some more Naples yellow. And it's going to be more yellow this time because there's more of the Naples yellow than the Thalo green now. Thalo green is such a strong colour though. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try. This is a homemade stencil of triangles. I do like my triangles. I use them a lot. They were inspired by, there's an artist that I really like called Mark English. He does some beautiful um, abstracty landscapes and he uses triangles in his artwork. So that's where I got that idea from. If you aren't already a subscriber, I'd be very grateful if you also subscribed. It'd be lovely to have some new people here. Right, now what next? 
This is the fun bit. I'm going in with some ultramarine blue. I may have got any attack out of that. It's nearly empty, that tab. I do have another one, though. And this is a lovely translucent colour. And I'm actually going to put a little bit on the page. You can see it's translucent, so you can see what's underneath shining through very well. I pop up there, and I'm going to do along the bottom as well, and along the top, just roughly with the roller. Now I've got my um, another homemade stencil of mine of words and I wasn't sure whether this would work very well but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Now there's a hint of text there, that's great. And similarly there's a hint of text there. Lovely, that's what I wanted. I don't want it to be readable or anything, I just want it suggested. What I'm aiming for is to give the effect of um, old weathered walls. And I think we're beginning to get that effect. Cleaned my roller off a bit then. I do that every now and then because I'm going in with a completely different colour now. And this is the magenta. And of course I've got far too much on, so I'm going to... Take a little bit off and put it at the top there. I'll be able to use that again later. I'm going to use my diamond stencil again. Pressing through firmly. This is fairly thick paper, so you need to do that. And I like what I have left there. I'm going to put a little bit of this on top there. Now that's beginning to build up. I'm going to put some on this page as well. Trying to get it in the gutter is difficult. Something I've noticed with jelly print, printing directly into your journal, the gutters get left out a little bit. I'm going to put some more on here and I'm trying to go just in the middle there. I'm going to use that bit there. Now I'm going to try um, a new technique, well not a new technique, but a technique I don't use very often and I'm going to try and do, um, I'm going to do a transfer image because I've got a face I would like to use. Now not all faces in magazines, it's a face from, oh I can't remember what this magazine is, I think it's a sports related one that my son gave me. Um, and it's got a nice face in it, which I'm going to use. I did try something else earlier, but I cut it out because it didn't work. And that was using a Rowan magazine. Didn't work at all. Which is a bit disappointing, but never mind. It was a pretty face too. Never mind. I like this one in the end. And this one works quite well for me in the end. So I'm pressing it firmly down. Because what you need to do is the dark tones of the print, the... The molecules need to bond with the dark um, molecules of the acrylic paint. And that's happened. I can see a face there. So you need to let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to do some other things in my journal. I'm going to use the roller that's nice and grungy now. And this is the next page, which I'm not going to finish on this video. I'm going to do that separately. I'm going to concentrate on just this one page for this video. Otherwise, it would have been too long. I'm going to put some Naples yellow on. Oh, I think I might have had too much there. I keep doing that, don't I? <sighs> Need to control myself. <laughs> now, I'm just going to put a bit of that on because that's where I want the face to go and it needs to have a bit of lightness in the background for it to show up. And I've got to do some on the other page. So the two pages tie together. That's good. Quick blast with a hairdryer. Lovely. I'm going to do some on this page as well while I've got the roller out. I do love this Naples yellow colour. Funnily enough, I was thinking of Italy when I was doing this. Venetian buildings and walls in particular. Mm, that's nice. That is nice and grungy. 
giving that another blast because I needed it to be quite dry when I applied the print. Now I think the print is ready. So I need to get some paint and I'm just trying to decide whether to do anything else first. Yes, I'm going to mix up some more colour and I'm going to put some more down on this page. I do love the effect the roller has, where it's diff totally different to brush marks. I love it. I am really glad I'm doing something different, working outside my comfort zone slightly, but that's a good thing. Now, I'm going to do the print. It's dry now, and I'm applying some titanium white. A lot of people use buff titanium, and I'm kind of regretting I didn't, because it's very ghostly, the, the image I get in the end. But I do like it. Of course I've put too much on. <laughs> so wiping it off on this paper. That's better. Right, here we go. So I'm laying that down on top of it. Again, I'm pressing very, very firmly. Now you have to be patient and fairly careful. There's no point in ripping it off. You've got to spend some time with this. I tested the top, it didn't wasn't working at the top. So I'm pressing it down further, further, pressing it all over. And then I have a little peek at the bottom and that's looking good so I peel it off and there you can see I've got a face isn't that good such a great method and I'm going in again with some of the Wedgwood blue I like it it's all very mysterious and grungy this is very different to what I normally do tell me what you think do you hate it or do you love it I rather love it it gives me something else to try I don't want to get stuck in a rut with my art. I want to try different things. And now what I want to try and do is tie in that blue, the ultramarine blue, so it isn't, doesn't look as if it's just stuck on. So here it is. It's looking good. I'm loving it. So now I'm going to do the journaling. So I've done a bit of stamping at the bottom there. And now I'm going to use this pen. I'm going to write, I'll show you what it is. It's the Uniball Signo Broad, and it's the only pen I know that writes well on acrylic. And I'm just going to write about my day yesterday, when I just went out and bought some shelves for my studio, which at the time of doing this journal I hadn't put together, but I have now, and they're looking great. It's given me a bit more space, which we were always needing, aren't we? So that's all I've written. I went with my son and his lovely wife. So that's good, I like to do a bit of journaling, because this is a journal page. Now I'm looking at it and I'm feeling that it needs a bit more, it needs um, a bit of framing. Oh, first of all I'll go in with some oil pastels, I kind of regret this, I didn't quite like what I did. I don't know why, for some reason they weren't speaking to me, that's odd because normally they make me so happy, but they weren't doing it for me, I don't know why. That doesn't matter, because... It all adds to the texture and some of it gets covered up later anyway because what I decide I'm going to do and I never normally do this is to do a bit of framing on my art journal page. So I'm going to go in with some collage and I'm just leafing through my scraps uh, which are to the right of me on my desk and I've got some pieces that will work quite well. Now that will. I want some greens and blues and I'm not going to go completely all the way around the edges. What I'm going to do is just indicate the edge that's going to go there. You'll see what I mean when I get a bit further in. And I'm just going to use a um, glue stick to stick it down. There, I like that. I like the hint of insect as well. And I've got this lovely piece of paper that's got some autumn foliage on, which is appropriate for this time of year. That looks great on the left there. That is nice, I like that. So as you can see, I'm just doing bits around the edges and that, that indicates the framing sufficiently. I need a little bit more first though. I'm going to pop that in there for, as well. That's a bit of one of my collage papers. Pop that in there like that. It's lovely. Oh, I like my collage papers. I've got another bit I'm going to put on the left-hand side. It's got a bit of sewing on. 
And that ties the two pages together again. There, I'm going to pop it there, or thereabouts. And just you can see there's a bit of thread hanging, I'm going to leave that hanging. Adds a bit of texture. It really does make me think of walls with peeling wallpaper, peeling paint. Exactly what I was aiming for. In fact, it's given me more ideas of things to try. Now I'm thinking of some words. I thought um, I've gone through my magic box of words and I've put some new ones in recently. Oh, that needs a bit more glue, I think. For some reason, it hasn't adhered very well. Well, try again, add a bit more. And so I found this word, these words in a world of rush. And I'm just thinking how it's nice to be quiet occasionally in this world of rush. It is a mad world at the moment. So that's far too much. So I just want to indicate a little bit. So I'm tearing a bit more off and that is much better. So as you can see, I now have an indication of a frame and I prefer it to, in this case, to going all the way around the edges and I'm going to glue down those words. There, that goes there. And there we have it. I finished. <laughs> this is so very different. I uh, really enjoyed making this. And I enjoyed trying something different. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.